Good morning, Warriors! Back with another episode of Vigor Warriors 2 and the 1% Club. Hope you guys are doing well this day before Thanksgiving. I want to first shout out to a lot of people. I have to kind of catch up on the shout outs. I'm going to probably do that uh, during Thanksgiving here and maybe uh, kind of do it on Friday if I get a chance. Uh, but a lot of great comments. Thank you guys for your well wishes and uh, we'll just continue with the battle, battling on and uh go we'll get our next we we'll go to our next goal of trying to get to 950 and we'll just kind of take it day by day and day and uh, all i know all i know is that i feel so much different now than i did 900 days ago i just can't explain it uh i'm actually losing a little a little weight that i had as well uh because i've kind of changed up a little bit a couple different things on my water and my fasting and that's kind of helped a little bit too and so we're getting there, and uh, we're kind of getting there. we still got two pack of apps, but we're trying to get to the four. We're getting closer and closer to go along. So, all right, my friends. So today, uh, there's a lot of great comments, by the way. I'm kind of doing a little bit of research on why, uh, and, and because people have asked me about this, is trying to figure out why uh, women pick certain men to mate and attract to. And we'll kind of talk about that thing. It obviously goes back to this whole beast mentality when I talk the beauty and the beast analogy, but I also see what it is when we talk about the idea of um, having that controlled beast-like mentality. And it's not it's not abusive, but it's also controlling and why that's attractive. So we'll talk about some of that stuff in a couple minutes here. Also wanted to mention that we've had some comments. Um, so, you know, obviously we talk about this. The tough part as I, for me, obviously, is because I am married, and so I have a wife, and so being in monk mode is very difficult, and so I kind of have to struggle that, with that a lot, because obviously, you know, when you're married, you're, you're, you're having a relationship with your wife, and so she's a wonderful wife, and so uh, so that that is going to take me away from monk mode. Now, it may not take me from releasing, but it does take me from monk mode, and so basically... Um, you know, that's the type of stuff. But what we're really talking about here, I think God, he blessed marriages. And so the marriage part of it is 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 entirely a different type of thing. But the big thing we're talking about, and I guess the thing I want to kind of emphasize, because, you know, we're talking about losing energy. And you have to kind of choose those times to lose your energy. And I guess that's the key to it. If you have a loving wife, if you have a someone that you care about and that's someone that you're with, you know, that's that's a better option in my book than looking at pictures and doing all those type of things, right? That's a better option because what you're doing is you're basically, you know, you're still losing energy, yes. But the bottom line is that you're doing it for a reason and a purpose. And I've always kind of said that, whether you're, you're procreation. Now, certainly I believe that you should only be doing that in the framework of marriage so you can have kids, uh, but also because your wife and husband, you know, you guys are united. And so you become one. And so that's a little bit of a different situation. I think that that's why God had said that if you can't control your urges, then you need to get married. I think it was in the New Testament, actually. But I think that's a key kind of point. Because what you're going to do is you want to control, and that's the title of this one we're talking about, control that innocent and vibrant energy. Krita, I think, was the person who kind of mentioned that to me in a, in a message. You want to, you want to control this. Um, God gave you this for a reason. God gave you this energy for a reason. And the reason is to be strong enough to protect and to provide and go out and gather whatever you need to gather. In the back in the caveman days, it was bad at getting out, gathering food, gathering shelter, building shelter for the family. And regardless of what we say in today's society, the man is, is a strong being. Women, most women are just not as strong. And women understand this. They understand that they have to, um, that, that one, of the, one of the things that attracts them to men is the idea of, of, of protection. And the idea of that someone is, you know, providing and, pro and protection. Now, in relationship, they're also nurturing and they have roles that they take on as well. And that's what makes a, a partnership, a, a relationship with people. 
But the idea that you have, that you, you have to be a male in your aspect of it is a crucial aspect of keeping civilization going. You need to have that strong masculine male to protect or else you're going to have a huge situation where, uh, you know, enemies, people can come in and take over. And I think this is what's happening in our society where we see a lot of males who are losing that energy. So having a, a situation with your wife is, a, is, is one thing. Now, I am trying to practice as much monk mode as I can. And again, you know, I'm like at 100 days, but again, that's obviously going to end up breaking at some point a lot faster than a no fat will. But the idea is that what you have to do is kind of realize that the key we're talking about, this is a lifestyle type of thing. And you guys have mentioned this a lot of times. This is a lifestyle thing. Your mentality changes. You have this, this energy when you were younger, and you know, a lot of you guys are younger, I think, a lot of the viewers are between 25, 34, uh, and then 35, 45, you know, something like that. But you guys have a lot of that energy. But it's kind of, it's it's a new energy because it's something that you we haven't been taught. No one teaches this kind of stuff, you know. You might have grandparents that have taught you this or parents, maybe in the old days. And celibacy is something the churches don't even talk about all, all that much either. And so that energy, transmuting energy, is not something we talk about. So as a result of that, a lot of young people, this is innocent, uh, you know, um, you know, I don't know what I'm working for, but it's, it's latent maybe, you know, latent type of behavior where it's just sitting there, you know, it's not ready to be used yet. It's almost like potential energy that you have. And you have to find ways to use it. Once again, as people have mentioned, retention itself is not, is not the only thing. It's not going to solve all your problems. You still have to do something with it. The fact that you have it inside you is one thing. But now you have to control it. And you have to kind of go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to use this for something that is worthwhile. Now, if you're going to use that to have a child with, with uh, a woman, that's great. You know, I don't, I think God intended that, that, you know, be fruitful and multiply. So obviously you have to release your energy to do that, of course. But on the other hand, you're also in a relationship with your, your wife. And if you're a female, your husband, and we have about a one, almost 2% female listening. And you're going to go ahead and have that union, a relationship. And that's, that, that's fine. But once again, you know, we look at the Bible and we look at the Ten Commandments and we look at all the things that people can do to break those commandments. And adultery is a huge part of that. So releasing outside of the marriage type of situation to me is, is something I would not do. Now, I'm not going to judge anybody, but I'm just not going to, I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm not going to get involved in a lot of those deviant behaviors that people get involved in because you're going down a wrong path. And I've seen that many, many times. And so what you have to do is kind of be controlled yourself. And this is where semen retention helps you a great deal. You learn the art of self-control. Because if you can control this, and this is such a powerful force in you, now you can control all the aspects of your life. You can control your diet. You can control your, um, you know, any kind of addiction you might have. You can get that under control. Exercising, fasting, taking cold showers, all those things learn discipline this is why you know people young people they go into certain things things like sports like like young young men especially sports and the army and services and the navy all kinds of stuff and they learn discipline they learn how to discipline themselves and their bodies and and you know listening to the word of god and having you know having uh you know god's laws under you and following those is the highest level of discipline you can get now, are we perfect? Of course, human beings are not perfect at all. I'm not perfect. I'm far from that. But I give you my perspective because I think as in through 61 years, what I've seen is a lot of different types of things of how you can go down that temptation road. And I've experienced a lot of those myself. So I think when you look at this idea, that's why I say that it's much better, in my opinion, this is my opinion, to have one person that you can actually be with 
Now, whether you choose to get married or not, that's your case. I think a lot of men are not choosing to get married now. Um, and I understand those reasons very well. The whole MGTOW movement, I understand what all that's about. But I guess what I'm saying, too, is when it comes to the energy part, and we're only talking about the energy part here, not legal issues and everything else, that God, I think, wanted you to control yourself. And I think that's why in the New Testament, I think it's Mark's uh, version talking about controlling yourself. If you can't control yourself, marry or find someone. Now, marriage, remember, the definition of marriage is a union, right? Whether you get that piece of paper or not, I guess that's a different issue. I believe in that, but I'm very old-fashioned. I know a lot of things have changed over the years as far as the laws and things like that. But I think certainly if you focus on a relationship with one person, you're not going to be tempted to go off and uh, find other women or if you're a woman, find other men that you're going to be able to have sex with and release energy to. So this is really a self-control type issue for you and for me and for everyone. And the more you can do that, the more strong you're going to be internally. And now you can do a lot of other things. And now you become stronger. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. And we talked about whether this is a myth or placebo. Well, your self-control and your ability to keep what you have inside you, I think, is very important. You know, like I said, I haven't been sick in a long, long time. And I don't remember. It's been years, right? And I didn't have to take anything over the last, you know, number of years to build it up. I take some vitamins, maybe zinc and, and D3 of late. But that's about it, you know. I haven't really taken a lot of stuff. But also, I noticed over the last 900 days, however, that I'm a lot better than I was before that. I'm a lot stronger. I feel strong. And it's because the energy inside of you is building. Now, what you do with that, you have to, you have to use it. You know, you have to control it. But you have to use it because this becomes very vibrant. People can notice. I think we had somebody make a comment yesterday. You know, I'll shout out when I when I write down a lot of the names of people sending me stuff. But someone mentioned this yesterday. I caught this when I was reading some of the, the comments. But how animals also react. I have animals all over the place here. When I come home, they all rush in. I got two dogs. You can just imagine the scene, right? Two dogs. One is a Great Pyrenees, big white dog, 110 pounds. A Newfoundland male dog who's 130 pounds sitting there. And I got four cats around me. All of a sudden, they're all, and these are all my kids' cats, by the way, and dogs. But they're all sitting there. And you wonder. They're all in a bed at night. What is that? Well, it, in my view, once again, because I see things from a physics standpoint with energy, that something is attracting them to you. And it's almost the same type of thing with people. They stare at you. They want to be near you, and all of a sudden you notice they're near you. And I see this every day, and it just continues to get stronger and stronger because people see that, right? And what happens then, then, is you have to control yourself. Now, why is that happening? Well, let's look at it from a male perspective here, from a female male perspective. We'll, we'll talk about this more in another video because I think this is very fascinating. And Jordan Peterson has said some stuff about this that I like too. When you talk about why a female is attracted to you. Once again, we go back to this beast control mentality. See, too many people, too many men out there, because they've lost their energy, they don't have that aura of, 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 of a beast. What do I mean by that beast? What I mean is someone who is strong and invincible, and they can go ahead and protect. So then the female feels safe. And most females fall into this category because they want to feel safe. And if they feel like someone is there to protect, and even in the modern era, you see that all the time. You know, of course, there's people, there's women who don't have that feelings. And, you know, that's a whole different matter for a different day. But the thing is, is that a lot of women do. And what you're looking at then is trying to have something where you are strong. But you have that beast-like mentality. Let's put it this way. If you have a beast-like mentality, you are a little bit unpredictable. You're kind of in that bottom line. You may still love that person you're with. But you have that ability, right, to be disagreeable. You never know where that mentality is going to go. 
you're controlled, but people sense it, sense that it's almost like the Wolverine character. Wolverine learned how to control. He attracts a lot of women because of the idea is that there's a, con there's a connection between this beauty and the beast that I talked about. In one sense, the female wants you to, to, they want to try to soothe the beast, but they don't want to lose the beast because the beast can control themselves to the point of whenever they need to, they can be a ferocious beast and protect and gather and go get some stuff. They have that energy to go get something, whether it's making money, whether in the old days it was going out and getting food, shelter, whatever it might be. So this is a fascinating type of dynamic here, is that the, the, the beauty person, the, the woman, is soothing the beast, but they don't want to get rid of the beast. Because once they tame the beast, what happens? Well, they don't want that beast because they realize subconsciously that beast is not going to be strong enough to protect them. And women through history have learned that just they're not strong enough physically. I'm not saying they're not smart, of course. Women are very smart. And women can do a lot of different things. And I'm not going to get into that whole discussion there because people will be upset and fight with me with some of this stuff. But what I'm saying is from a physical standpoint, it's just obvious. Right? All you got to see is what's happening in the world with all this kind of athletics and things like that. You just, it's obvious. There's nothing wrong with this. But this is the way it should be. And that, then, women are looking for males subconsciously or consciously. They're going to protect them. And that makes a heck of a lot of sense, especially if they're going to have children. So you know, if you look at it from a species standpoint, a bird standpoint, the males are always the one that are there the female is responsible for the family and nurturing and making sure you know, families go on and the generations go on. But the male has to protect all that. And that hasn't changed. That will never change biologically. It just never will. No matter what people will say, no matter what people do out there. I mean, this is if you if you think that the world is is different now than it was thousands of years ago, as far as human nature goes. I would, I would encourage you guys, go back and read what happened in the Roman Empire. All the lascivious behaviors that occurred. And people dressing up all kinds of different outfits, all different things in the Roman Empire. That happens. That happened. That happened long before then, Sodom and Gomorrah. That happened in Babylon. So this, this type of thing that people think this is a progressive type of thing, this is just a repeat, a repeat Notion. Now, yes, the technology different. There's certain aspects of different tools. But all you got to do is look at people. People are able to construct and build things amazing. Look at the eight, the old eight wonders of the world back in the old days. You know, it's just phenomenal. And so when you look at that, you can see the difference between all that. And you can see the difference in trying to um, see how things get built. So things don't change all that much. So, all right, my friends, I'm going to leave you for today. You guys have a great day. And remember, every day is a new day to a wise warrior. Maybe I'll try to do one uh, tomorrow for Thanksgiving. God bless you guys, and battle on!